ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ही ओम श्रद्धा इज द नेक्स्ट क्वालिफिकेशन फॉर द फॉर द गेन ऑफ द नॉलेज ऑफ द सेल्फ श्रद्धा मीन्स ट्रस्ट पेंडिंग understand that is what is called shraddha there are two kinds of trust supposing the shastra says there is heaven there is no proof even though somebody might be heaven returned back to earth we have no way of verifying that they have no way of verifying that because there is no memory all the memory of previous lives and in between each one life and the next has been wiped away by god is maya so there is no memory at all and so uh, therefore we take it at face value this is called belief what kind of a belief non verifiable belief so many things in the shastra in the veda have uh, this status that there is a heaven non verifiable belief that i will survive death and go there non verifiable belief once i am there i will like that non verifiable belief so many non verifiable beliefs and i come back from there non verifiable belief all this we have to take it at face value because the shastra itself says this that's all we don't have any other um, any other quote unquote proof because shastra is the proof now the atma being ishvara atma means i so my nature being totally non separate from ishvara as satchidanandam brahma the cause of the universe i am this is the vision of the uh, latter portion of the veda called vedanta and in this vision the demise of sorrow anxiety etc takes place in the wake of this knowledge sorrow dies anxiety dies doership dies that i am done in by other people's doings dies guilt dies hurt dies all the finitude dies this is my this is uh, my reclamation of my nature and so when the shastra the teachings reveal that i am sat that which exists without a prop that is what is sat chit consciousness that which exists without a prop self standing sat also is a sentient sat it's not a dead sat then that sentient sat which is self existent self standing does not need to lean on any other thing for its existence unlike anything else in the universe also happens to be forever the same limitless ananta ananda and that which is forever is the source of ananda because that is what one wants anything pleasant one wants it to last a long time the shastra says you are already that which lasts forever so this vision and this message of the shastra i have to ingest assimilate live it has to be a lived assimilated knowledge and that is not a non verifiable belief it is a fact it is a fact to be discovered that there is a heaven it's a non verifiable belief and and which will remain forever non verifiable it will not be later on verifiable 
Even if it is later on verifiable, what's the use? You, you forget. That's all it is. You don't have any recollection of it. So, certain things will always be remote, always be non-verifiable and certain things are a fact. They are not remote. This Sat is never away from me because anything I say exists. Is it, it requires me to verify it. So, I am the one who, who is and all things exist after me. I am the one who shines. All things shine after me. So this Sat Chit which I am is, is a fact. It is a fact. Why? Because it is discoverable. It is communicable. It is understandable. It is livable. These are the reasons why it is not an abstraction. It is not a belief based knowledge. If supposing the Guru says, you are such Chit Ananda, the student must not say, oh revered one, I believe you. <laughs> what is the use of that? It is, this is not a matter for belief. There is a difference between a matter for belief, which is beyond logic, and a matter for understanding, which is also beyond logic. There is a big difference. And so, the first portion of the Veda is filled with matters for belief. There is this yajna, doing which you will have a child. I know what it is to have a child, but how is it connected to this yajna? I know what a child looks like and okay, it's fine. And uh, I don't mind having a child, somebody can say. But how is this connected to the yajna? Don't know. But then another yajna, if you do this and if you, uh, and only people, young people are supposed to do it. Krishna Keshaha Yajet, meaning the person who has original color hair, <laughs> you know, not dyed and all these things. Original color hair should be the, not, uh, not turned grey, that is the idea. Krishna, Krishna Keshaha uh, uh, Yajet. So, young person should do it. Before the hair turns grey, before one is 40-50 years, it's, this should be done. The adhikaritvam is given. And if you do that, then you will get these, 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 these results. How? Nobody knows. And if a grey-haired man or woman does it, will the result come? And how will it come? Whether it will come? Nobody knows. The connection is not spelled out. So the first portion of the Veda is belief based for the large part. There is not much to know really. The second portion of the Veda is what? Based on knowing. The, this uh, uh, dismantling of self-ignorance which is in the way of knowing the truth of myself. Interestingly enough, both the, uh, the first portion of the Veda which describes various rituals in keeping with the human uh, desires and their uh, results. And the second portion of the Veda which describes one's nature as untouched by sorrow and fear, both of them have to be received with Shraddha, respect, devotion and trust. In the first portion of the Veda, it is just belief. It is just unquestioning trust. Why is it unquestioning trust? Because nothing will happen if you question also. Like how if I do this, I will go to heaven. Nobody will be able to tell you. Connections are silent, invisible. So the first one is just based on pure Shraddha, belief, without questions. And the second portion, the information, the knowledge in the second portion of the Veda is based on what we call trust initially, but trust pending understanding. Like when the scientist writes a paper, 
they write a paper in the uh, National Journal of Science and they submit the paper. And then what? It's a, what is called a peer-reviewed journal, meaning a, peer, the, the, a group of peers means other colleagues who they don't know and who they may know, but they don't know that it is this one's paper. Blindly, they will keep, keep aside the cover page and just give the article to the group of scholars in one's field. And they read the article and say, okay, uh, uh, first they will read the hypothesis and it sounds outrageous. How is this possible? That's why they were, uh, when uh, first uh, uh, Einstein came out with the theory of relativity, everybody dismissed it. But then they had to look closely because it was so outrageous, so outlandish and almost impossible if empirically impossible and so therefore first they may dismiss it but then they say okay let's take a closer look and see what is happening. So they keep the distrust aside and see how the uh, author unfolds the hypothesis. What is the hypothesis? How is it proven? What kind of studies were done? whether they were double blind studies and all these things and then finally it is proven. Then they say, yeah. So first they have Shraddha in the paper based on, okay, this is somebody, you know, very erudite is writing in this journal. You know, a fourth grade student is not going to write in such a journal. They know it is somebody who is very scholarly. So they put their, uh, put their distrust aside but still they are not fully convinced and then later it, the, the trust turns into understanding. Before the trust it has to be understanding. That's how many branches of knowledge operate. So to Vedanta. So it's a trust that is based on reverence. Shraddha is reverence. Shraddha is devotion. Devotion to this most sacred knowledge which is totally life-saving and which is totally revolutionizing one's own vision of oneself from a finite person to understanding that I am infinite. So this is not a small thing. It's not like saying, oh, you know, this is... Uh, this is just a small piece of information. By the way, do you know that uh, this particular goat in this particular town has two heads? It's not that kind of an information. It is, it is, it is a very profound truth which revolutionizes my whole vision and how I see myself, the world and Ishvara. And since the subject matter of this inner revolution is Ishvara and I the, the individual self is being equated to Ishvara, God, then that means I have to have the kind of trust that is reverential. In the Viveka Chudamni, this Shraddha is described as Shastrasya Guruvakyasya Satya Buddhi Avadharana Sa Shraddha Kathitha Sadbhihi Yaya Aksharam Adhigamyate. Yaya Aksharam Adhigamyate. That mechanism, that teaching by which, that transmission by which Aksharam Brahma, the unchanging, indeclinable Brahman, Ishvara, as oneself is understood. Sa, that, you know, the, the, that mechanism that prerequisite by which this is understood is called Shraddha. What is this Shraddha? Shastrasya with reference to the teaching, the revealed texts. And Guru Vakyasya with reference to the Gurus. Vakya here is not sentence but the, the Guru's exposition of it. The Guru's explanation, the Guru's unfolding or any words of the Guru. I take it reverentially and with reference to the words of the teaching and the words of the Guru, 
I have I give a benefit of doubt. I give a benefit of doubt because it may seem, it may appear contradictory to my understanding of myself, but still I say, since the Shastra is saying it, since the Guru is saying it, I will not dismiss it. Uh, what will I do instead? I will hold my distrust in suspension. Because you cannot eliminate distrust all of a sudden. So what do you do with the distrust? We hold it in suspension. This is what is called Shraddha. And so holding it in suspension means what? Not letting it cloud my receptivity. When the receivers are all tangled up or there is some you know, wire or some uh, something, then the transmission is disturbed. The transmission is disturbed you know, because there is some rain or there is some pollution or something like that. And hitting the TV is of no use. <laughs> People do this in India. <laughs> yeah. You hit the TV, you try to <laughs> you, you try to reorient the antenna and that's at least better, that's at least useful. But still either the picture is going rapidly like this or it is all garbled and people just hit the television from one side and another side, it's not going to do, it's not going to do much uh, and it's not going to do anything. So similarly, Blaming oneself and hitting oneself because one is not getting this knowledge is not going to do anything. We have to look at the source of the disturbance. Why is the TV picture garbled or jumping? Why is it garbled? Why is the, the TV which used to be receiving the, 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 the picture and the information, why is there a disturbance? Then when we look into it closely, deeply, we find that the disturbance is usually due to weather or a bird is sitting on the satellite or something or a kite wire has got entangled so you can go to the terrace this is all in india okay this is not this is not of any use in western countries then why are you talking about it just so that people get a little bit of trivia of how we live here okay and in the rural areas this is how it is so, and sometimes it gets very nicely, very, it, it becomes very, very picturesque. Grandpa is downstairs, can't get his news or his favorite sports channel. Tells the grandchild, go up and just turn the antenna and tell me. And the granddaughter goes up and she says, Grandpa, can you see now? Yeah, 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 just stay there. No, it's gone again. I told you to stay there, stupid girl. Why can't you understand what I'm saying? So it's very nice. Because she can't hear and he, he could not, she can't hear because she's far away. He could not hear even when she's close. And this is how it's very, very hilarious. Back to the Drishtanta. In the Drishtanta, we find that when we look into the cause of the disturbance, then we know what to do. The cause of the disturbance is very important. So, Shraddha is overcoming distrust. But first, before overcoming, I need to know why is it that I'm not trusting? What is it that, that uh, is making me not trust? And there are several reasons here. There's one ultimate, you know, mega reason, but we'll come to that later. There are several reasons. I can't trust because the material that is being offered to me is outrageous and outlandish. I am God, come on. Then why will I be sitting here? <laughs> I am non-separate from God, Ishvara. That means I should be flying and going wherever I want. I should be manifesting all kinds of things. Why would I? Why would I have all these limitations? Living in this body. Why will some part be aching and another part is something and this thing is compromised and that thing is compromised? And most people say, I can't eat this, I can't eat that. If I was God, then I don't need to eat at all. <laughs> I should be uh, omniscient and sarva, uh, sarva, uh, sarva vyapi, all pervasive. But that's not the case. I'm small pervasive and I'm small knowledge. I'm not all knowledge. Ishvara omniscient and what I am? 
struggling to spell omniscient the word. <laughs> this is what, always I before E, except after C. But here C comes, so what is there? How is it different? So <laughs> this is <laughs> this is English for us. So this is this is the problem. I am struggling to spell the word omniscient and Ishvara is all knowledge. So the information is so outlandish and so outrageous that of course it is met with distrust. Like supposing if I tell you, just look out of that window, whichever window, and a man is distributing hundred dollars. And you can have as many bills as you want. As many bills you want, you want whatever you want. No, I want the $25,000. Yes, he's distributed. So, how will you greet this information? With incredulity. And incredulity is another uh, word for distrust. Even if, forget Guru or Shastra, even if Ishwara were to come himself, herself would come and say that somebody is distributing hundred dollars there. Please go get as many as you want. They'll never run out of it. In fact, they have been distributing for the last three days. You will treat this information not with a pinch of salt, not with a grain of salt, with a bag of salt, with a big bag of salt because this is so outlandish. This is one reason why there can be distrust because it is like it is completely uh, outside of what I know to be true about anything that I have seen. And I have lived a few years. I know what things are like. I know what people are like. They are not suddenly going to distribute money when they can keep it for themselves especially. So this is, you know, this is one reason. So when the Shastra tells me, when the Guru tells me that you are not what you think you are, you are not wanting, you are not miserable, you are free, you are whole and you are a non-actor. <laughs> what do I feel like? I feel like telling the Guru to pay all my bills. Okay, I am a non-actor, you pay the bills. Who is going to pay the bills every month? I am akarta, non-actor, non-doer. And so I'll have to tell the Guru uh, because I can't tell the Shastra. Shastra cannot pay the bills but perhaps Guru can. So I can tell the Guru pay the bills because this is incredulous information. So outrageous, so bold, so daring and so outside the ken of my own experiences. And the experiences of others around me. Non-doer means I'll sit nicely, no problem. I'll sit and eat pakodas and you you pay the bills. Whoever tells you you are a non-doer, you should tell them that. And so this is one reason why this, uh, uh, you know, the, it is very difficult to trust. This is one reason. Plus, there are other reasons as well. The second reason is that Whatever knowledge is being given by the Upanishad, the Bhagavad Gita, the Brahma Sutras and other secondary texts in the tradition are completely contradictory to my lived experience. First reason, it is outlandish and totally outrageous. Never heard of anything like this. The second reason is it is totally contradictory to my experience, my lived experience and my lived everyday reality. What is my lived everyday reality? I go from complaint to complaint. That is my everyday reality. First, I did not like what I had for breakfast. And that was very terrible. Why did they have this? Why couldn't they have made something else? Of all the things they had, this only. And they repeat it so often. What's wrong with them? And this, and then the day only got worse. From there, another complaint. I was trying to sit somewhere and somebody else came and sat in my place. Another complaint. I could not, I could not enjoy. I could not enjoy the morning lecture because somebody came and took my place. 
and then from there another complaint i didn't have this i couldn't go here then i was about to go for a walk when somebody came so i couldn't go for a walk complaint number 3 after that we soon lose count okay and then then after somebody came why didn't you go yes i wanted to go but then the sun came out so i could not go because i don't like to walk in the sun and so then the whole day is like this one complaint to another complaint from tear to fear tears to fears the whole day progresses and day after day i progress from tears to fears and back to tears anxiety sorrow anxiety sorrow sorrow anxiety and and some some somebody said oh just this whole life is an alternation between happiness and sorrow sukha dukha they lied that's a lie what is my lived experience it's not sukhi dukhi sukhi dukhi happy sad happy sad then i can take if it is alternative cycles of happy and sad happy me then sad me then happy me again so when i am sad actually i'll be happy because the next thing that's coming is happy happy me is going to come next happiness is going to come next but whoever said that was not correct was totally incorrect you know why you want to know why because my lived experience is not sukhi dukhi sukhi dukhi my experience is dukhi sukhi dukhi sad happy sad ha not even happy <laughs> sad this is my lived experience and you have the temerity to come to me and say you are all joy <laughs> come on if what you tell me goes along with my experience then we can do something together we can have a support group <laughs> we can all be sad together we can all be sad together no problem but what you are telling me and what this book called the upanishad which is actually uh, a, a a knowledge that is transmitted through words what you are telling me is not this at all is completely beyond logic i am i am there no problem because it is beyond the scope of inference logic etc etc i'm there like you tell me you do this yagna and you will go to heaven no problem if i'm if i'm interested in heaven i can do it i will not question it because it is beyond logic beyond logic i do not have a problem but what you are telling me is against logic <laughs> because against the logical lived experience of most people you ask anybody how are you doing what does that mean so 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 in more in the west they do this so 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 means what pay is good in the job boss is bad <laughs> so so one one so is up and another so is down how is the job pay is good commute is bad pay is good boss is bad boss is good pay is bad <laughs> all these different combinations how is your health something it goes it's going thank god i can still eat whatever i want but i have all kinds of aches and pains i have no aches and pains but along with that i have no energy either <laughs> so so how are the finances money is coming in it's also going out so so how are the children the the hand goes a little faster 
they are teenagers. <laughs> they don't listen to any anything and anybody. And finally, how is the marriage? <laughs> Precarious. This is how everybody's lived experiences. Precarious. That's why when I first encountered this uh, sign, I thought it was standing on a precipice, like a stone that is shaking. Precarious. My life is precarious. My health is precarious. My relationships are precarious. My memory is <laughs> precarious. And my lived experiences, vicarious. Because I'll never get to do that. So I like to watch things called <laughs> lifestyles of celebrities. <laughs> oh, how nice. Look at their house. House of the rich and the famous. They show all this on TV. They pay the celebrities the money they don't need and then they photograph their house and go around and everything and the celebrity shows off their house. Oh, look at all this, look at this thing. Huge house. 25 bed bedrooms and then 20 bathrooms and then two people living there. This is how it is. So my life is either precarious or vicarious. Vicariously lived, precariously lived. And you come and tell me Something that is completely contradicting to what I know to be real, not real, but not just about my life, but about the lives of everybody else that I know in the whole world. This is what it is. This is the second reason there is distrust. Definitely. These are the local reasons of distrust. Because it is going completely opposite to what I know about my life to be true. That I am an unfulfilled person. That I am, that even when I ask for things, things don't come to me. That I am a complaining person because that's the only way to get heard. Like a small baby that keeps crying. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. That's how I, I know how to lead the life. And so this is what I know. And so what you're telling me is totally opposite. These are what we call local reasons. And these are what we call local means. Uh, in, in Sanskrit, laukika. <laughs> local. <laughs> laukika reasons. Local reasons. Lived, you know, talked about. Worldly reasons. But then the Shastra gives, the Shastra that I do not want to trust yet, gives a reason why this, you know, why this distrust exists. The Shastra says that this distrust is not your fault. Mm -hmm. Huh? Really? Up till now I was not willing to look at the Shastra in the face. Now suddenly I am ready to sit up. Okay, tell me more. Why? Because up till now everything has been my fault. Parents said it's, everything is your fault. That you were born itself is a fault. And this is what it is. In fact, I met a, I met a set of parents, two of them, and they, their pet name for their child was, Hey, karma, come here. <laughs> karma? can mean good karma or bad karma but from the way they treated the, the, their son it was very clear they were not referring to punya, good karma they were referring to bad karma they yeah, stupid <laughs> hey karma, come here hey prarabdha, come here so <laughs> this is something this is what I know this is what I think so the Shastra for the person who has been called bad news all their life, suddenly the Shastra says, it's not one more thing. The fact that you have distrust is not your fault. It is strangely soothing. And then I recall the other words of the teacher which I had not been willing to listen. I had mentally said, talk to the hand. <laughs> Not to me, talk to the hand, I'm out of here. And so the other words of the Guru come 
and there is a little nook in the heart for them to sit. What is it that the Guru said? What is it that the words of the Shastra said? Adi Shankara says that the, the, the Shruti is very soothing and comforting like a thousand compassionate mothers. That I had heard and I said, yeah, right. But now I say, yeah, this is the first time when something is not my fault. Okay, okay, say more. Tell me more. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Let me listen. Now the attitude has shifted. From what? Distrust to an open mind. We won't go so far as to say trust yet. But a mind that is willing to give the benefit of doubt to the words of the teacher and words of the Shastra. How, how was this accomplished? How was this leap from distrust to trust accomplished? What was the reason? Just because the, the reason here in this example was because the person was told this is not your fault. So whose fault it is? The Shastra says Atma Ajnanam Self-ignorance is to blame. Oh, but self means I and ignorance. So I am to blame for self-ignorance, my own ignorance. Shastra says, no, the Guru also is a mouthpiece of the Shastra, the one that amplifies the Shastra, the teachings. The Guru also says, no, why? Every single person is born in Atma Ajnana. Every single person. In fact, the cause of birth itself is Atma Ajnana. No Atma Ajnana, no birth. Hmm. So everybody is like that? Are you sure? Yes. Okay. So then, why do I have Atma Ajnana? Because that, that is what was there before. Before this body came, that was there. And then, so what, what is the big deal about Atma Ajnana? It comes in the way of your happiness. Oh, now I'm really ready to listen. Why am I ready to listen? First, it's not my fault. Second, the Shastra is speaking my language. It is telling me that the thing that I am mad after, i.e. Sukha, is being inhibited by Atma Ajnana. That means there is Sukha somewhere. But I'm not able to search for it. I'm not able to look for it. I'm not able to make it my own. Therefore, I start to be able to suspend my judgment, my hopelessness, my fears, and then be able to engage with the teachings of the Shastra delivered by, unfolded by, magnified by the Guru. But then, this Atma Ajnanam has two components. This is something to know in the course of developing Shraddha. This is something to know. It has two components. One is, uh, I don't know my nature. This is Atma Ajnanam. I don't know my nature. Shastra says, you are Satchidananda. I say, I am Dukkha. I am forever Dukkha. I am forever doubt, Doubter and Dukkha. I have Ashanti. I have Samshaya. And I have Dukkha. This is what my lived experience is. And so now the fact that I am not happy or I cannot live a happy life is not my fault. And whose fault it is? Atma Ajnana, which is for there for everyone. And when I am told that the Atma Ajnanam inhibits happiness, then I have the inner space finally to look into my life and see how. Because it's not my fault. 
Everybody has been blamed for no reason and so therefore one is sensitive about listening to the Shastra lest uh, not being happy is also pinned on one, like pin the tail on the donkey game. So this way I come closer and closer to dropping the doubt and the despair. And the cultivation of Shraddha is through dropping the doubt, the despair and the fears. Connected to owning up the message of this vision. To living the message of this vision. Especially because it is so contradictory to what I think my lived experience is. So Shraddha is cultivated. It gets better with age. Like many things get better with age. Pickles get better with age. Because they have a chance to marinate in the spices. So if you just immediately put a pickle and eat it, then whatever you have, lemon, etc. will not have given its juices to the, to the spice blend. And the spice blend along with the salt would not have entered the vegetable that is pickled. So you have to let it sit for some time. So same thing. Shraddha tastes better and better with age. As soon as I think I have accomplished Shraddha, then six months later when I check back and look back, I find that I have even more Shraddha now, even more Shraddha, even more Shraddha is slowly cultivated and it gives the benefit of Atma Jnana. It, it helps, it's the single most important qualification that cultivating which it dispels Atma Jnana because I am finally as a Shishya student receptive to the teachings of the Guru. This is what makes the difference between knowing and then going away uh, after listening to the Shastra business as usual. This is what makes the difference. The difference is in how I listen. I listen with trust. So this is the, so the first reason why it is difficult to drop the trust. As I said, it's going against the, the, the grain. The first reason is because it's outlandish. Second reason, it's going against the grain of my lived experience. And the third reason is the second form of Atma Adhyana. First is, I don't know. I don't know, I'm Satchidananda. And then, therefore. <laughs> it's a very funny therefore. Therefore, I mistake myself to be what I am not. Two components, two aspects of two faces of Atma Ajnanam self-ignorance. One, I don't know who I am. Dog also doesn't know. Cat also doesn't know. Dog doesn't say, I am God. I have to change the spelling in my name. It's not dog, it's God. It also doesn't know that I am Satchidananda Atma. I am Jagat Karanam Brahma. I am the cause of the universe. It doesn't know. I also don't know. What is the difference between the dog and me? Oh, well, the dog in this case is better off. <laughs> because it doesn't have the second component of Atma Ajnanam, which is Anyatha or Ayatha Jnana. The dog doesn't say, I don't know myself, therefore I'll think of myself as a monkey. As a donkey, I'll take myself to be what I'm not. No. Only in the human being, we have the second component of Atma Ajnanam, which is relevant to discuss because since I don't know who I am, I have, there is a danger of coming to the conclusion, I am what I am really not. I am sad. I am an idiot. I'm a donkey. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. Nobody is there for me. I am isolated. These are all the ingredients, the hallmarks of samsara. 
sorrowful existence, a life of constantly and infinitely becoming something and uh, instead of seeing that one is already infinite. This is the problem. In human beings, the Atma Ajnanam takes on two components, two aspects. It's not just that I don't know myself. Since I have free will and the will is totally free, unlike in animals, I am free enough to judge myself and to come to a conclusion that I am a wanting, sad, hopeless, helpless, despondent, desperate person. I have the privilege. How do I use this privilege? By coming into wretched conclusions about myself. And then with such a mind as we saw earlier, if the Shastra is given, how will it, uh, how will it uh, accept? But what is the cause of this wrong understanding? Usually we say the unconscious mind. Where are all these thoughts coming? Where is this factory of thoughts as though churning out the non-realities, parading as the reality? Pratibhasika is the word we use for subjective reality. So the subjective reality that I am a wanting person is a subjective reality. In sleep, what wants are they? No wants. That contradiction itself makes it unreal. The word real is used only for Sat, that which never changes. Sat, Chit, Ananda never changes. That Sat which is, which is sentient, Chit, which is always in, the, uh, always in the form of joy, unbridled, limitless joy which is forever, that is Ananda, that is Ananta. Other than that, everything is constantly changing. So I just have to examine my despondency, my desperation, my hopelessness, my fears and my tears in the light of this. Is it real? The answer always is no. Why? If it is real, it should be there all the time. Then what? Everybody should be congratulating one another whenever they are sad because that is the reality. But that's not the case. Once you go to sleep, the despondent one has gone to sleep. But the one that is asleep is the non-despondent one, the non-desperate one, the non-finite one. So that vyabhichara means that contradiction itself is uh, enabling me to question whether this is the reality. And when I take this to be myself, it is called Pratibhasika, a subjective understanding of myself. And so, what is the what is Satchidananda? So that I am Satchidananda Atma. The Shastra's view is called Paramarthika, the absolute. Uh, beyond that, there is nothing else. Beyond the infinite, what will be there anyway? So beyond that, there is nothing. This is Paramarthika, and then. What connects the Paramarthika and the Pratibhasika is Vyavaharika. Vyavaharika, the everyday lived reality, the so-called duality, the so-called variegated universe of sights, sounds and experiences that daily comes in through the ears, the eyes, etc. that I intake. This in-between reality is what is the issue here because it showcases the pratibhasika the subjective reality and uh, and then i have the i have the innate and a dubious ability to convert the vyavaharika which is a projection of ishvara which is this projected uh, uh, reality the the jagat which is non-separate from Ishvara, which is a projection, like even in my dream, what do I do to this reality? I see it with my own lenses and then I transfer my sorrow onto the Jagat and say, this is a sad place. Nothing ever goes in, in my way. Nothing goes my way. 
Everything is set up for me to fail, for me to be sad, for me to be a wanting person. So you see how the my own sorrow, my own conclusions about myself is plastered on to the Jagat, to Ishvara also and of course to other jivas. This one is an idiot, that one is not good, that one has has problems and, and then Ishvara also. The Ishvara is partial, Pakshapatvam is there, Pakshapatvam is partiality. Partial. That one, that one who is not even a good person, so much Ishvara is giving and me, hard-working, dharmic individual, full of dharma, what am I getting other than a headache? This is the conclusion. So the Jagat, which is a benign projection of Bhagavan, as the Shastra tells us, is seen to be a battleground, a sorrowful place. Why? Because I have slathered it with the coat of paint called subjectivity, pratibhasikam. And so, with this pratibhasikam, with the lens of pratibhasikam, when I greet the Mahavakya, the sentences in the Upanishad that tell me I am non-separate from Ishvara, Tattvamasi, you are that, you are that Ishvara. Aham Brahmasmi, I am that Brahman. This is all Upanishad Vakyas. Upanishad sentences that are, uh, that uh, dispel the duality between myself and the whole. What do I say? This is not possible. It is, what is talking is, is my hopelessness, is my despondency is the impossibility of it because of my own doubt, my despair. And so, I, I have to see that the in, in between these two components of Atma Ajnana, the first one being I don't know who I am and the second one being a very dubious, therefore I think I am a wanting sad person, the first one I leave it to the teacher. That I don't know who I am is the responsibility of the Shastra. And the Shastra is wielded by the Guru. So that, that becomes the responsibility of the Guru to get rid of the basic ignorance. Now I have to take care of the spawns of this ignorance in the form of sorrow, in the form of despondency in the form of doubt, despair, want, complaints. I have to take care of that. But the general tendency is to put all that in the Guru's lap and say, okay, I will now dispel my own Atma and Jnana. <laughs> we have stood it, made it stand on its head. But that's not, not how the process works. I have to be responsible because these feelings are intimate to me. The Guru is not going to pick up after these feelings. It's not the Guru's job to take care of the unconscious, to take care of the unconscious mind, which is the, uh, which is, we'll talk a little more about that soon. But the unconscious mind is the warehouse of all these emotions. I have to take care of that. And then I give to the Guru the responsibility of dispelling Atma Adhyana. But I don't think that Atma Ajnanam is bothering me. What is bothering me is immediate. Pain, hopelessness, sorrow, despondency, despair, etc. That I want quick relief. So I want to put it in the Guru's lap. And then I get angry. Why is the Guru not taking care of this? It's not the Guru's portfolio. Why? Because the Guru's job is only to eat up the Ajnanam. That's what it is. Not, not all this. The, the, the spawns of Ajnanam I have to take care of. Why? Because I don't even see the magic that the Guru is doing. Because of the Pratibhasika that is slathered on the Guru, on the Shastra, on the Jagat, on other Jeevas. I don't even see the transformation and the transformation is 
very inhibited, I cannot uh, help this transformation. In order to help this transformation, I have to take responsibility by going back to my childhood and seeing that there was trust. Yes, what happened to that trust? Gone. Why? <laughs> Mother present but inconsistent. Father inconsistent also but absent. And in this kind of a, you know, siblings waste of time. And so therefore, in this kind of a uh, situation, milieu, I grew up. And so therefore, I have this problem. Therefore, I have this issue. Therefore, I have this pain. Therefore, I have this sorrow. And so I have to dare to trust again. Daring to trust again is called Shraddha. How to dare to trust again? We see that in the next video. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Nagmaha Hari he